President Jacob Zuma told the SABC today that South Africa was ready to host political leaders and captains of industry as the World Economic Forum on Africa got underway. He sees it as a chance to showcase South Africa to the rest of the world and to show that this country remains a good investment destination. Subtitled, Then and Now, Reimagining Africa's Future, this year's is the 25th edition of the gathering. The agenda includes rising unemployment, food insecurity, and the growing income gap, and how to resolve these issues. Our business anchor, Francis Hurd, is in Cape Town. Good evening, Francis. How was the first day at the ICC? Good evening, Gunter. Very wet. It's a very rainy Cape Town, but I can tell you that there's an unprecedented turnout uh, that was expected. And from my perspective, the hotels around the International uh, Convention Center are literally bursting at the seams with delegates from across Africa, from across the world. Not too much happening today in terms of public forums. Uh, the official opening will be tomorrow morning by President Jacob Zuma after that. You know, it's jam-packed with sessions on all those issues you were talking about, sustainable growth, integration, um, sessions on Ebola, what we can learn from. Uh, looking forward, to Africa has these great growth rates, and it's been a really good story in the last uh, decade and a half, growing faster uh, in general uh, than the rest of the world. If, if we look at the continent as a whole, of course, we are dragging down Southern African growth. But the question is, is that sustainable? Sustainable. Uh, can we keep up those growth rates? What about all these young people entering the market? Uh, there's going to be this youth bulge and we need to stay competitive and absorb that labor. Let, let's get some um, analysis or some opinion of what's expected. And I'm now joined by Peter Mwangi, who is the CEO of Old Mutual in Kenya. And you've come a bit of a way. Welcome to you, Peter. Thank you very much, Francis. What, what do you think the story is right now? Uh, Africa was the forgotten continent, then it was Africa rising. Are we still rising? Uh, I think we are. Uh, I think that the numbers across the continent bear that story out. Um, and to my mind, the momentum is um, building up. So we expect to see this growth accelerate um, in the coming years and decades. And uh, for me personally, it's exciting to be you know, part of this African uh, growth story uh, that's unfolding. Can we see growth accelerate, even though, uh, in some perspectives, the, the focus is returning to the developed world? Um, Nigeria suffered because of lower oil, oil prices, although their growth rate's still quite good. How, how has Kenya fared? What, what does the future look like? I think for, for Kenya and for the East African region as a whole, the prospects are, are very, very good. The trajectory, uh, if you think about it in the medium to the long term, uh, is upward. I think all the fundamentals support uh, continued growth uh, in the East African region. It is true that from time to time we will see, you know, some volatility around exchange rates or commodity prices, and that will impact short-term performance. But the structural, the secular process that is underway uh, has yet um, a long way to play out. So I see quite a lot of runway ahead for, for African economies uh, generally. Well, let's talk about markets because I understand you are the former CEO of the, the stock market in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. um, so, so something that we obsess about a little bit in South Africa is the fact that America uh, is going to raise interest rates that could hit our rand. We become a little less competitive compared to this massive economy. Um, w what do you think that will mean for emerging markets, African markets when it happens? Well, I think that uh, quantitative ease was a factor in uh, uh, raising asset prices uh, globally. Uh, risky assets were that much more attractive because investors were looking for higher yielding assets uh, as a destination for their, for their capital. But uh, the reversal of QE or indeed um, you know, monetary tightening in, in the advanced economies is um, one of those other influences that are short term in nature. Um, but I, I think that Regardless of you know the monetary policy stance of central banks across the world, the fundamentals for African growth uh, are very strong, 
and there's no discounting that. So if you look at, um, the, you mentioned the demographics. I think that uh, if, if you look at where Africa will be in 2050, uh, the, the sheer number of consumers, the middle class, the working age population, we are very well placed to reap a demographic dividend from that. And it is those long-term factors that um, give us confidence that Africa is indeed on the rise. You're talking about the, the young people, this youth bulge, the about a billion people going to enter mm -hmm. um, the, the working market. So some people say that's a huge threat because of the restlessness. If there's unemployment, you say it's a, an opportunity. Mm -hmm. But how do we ensure uh, that those young people do get jobs and, and do help uh, lift their economies? I, I think it's, uh, it's an opportunity. Uh, but as most opportunities, the, the flip side of it is the challenge. How do we cope? We have all these young people, uh, a lot of them are increasingly getting very good education, so they have the skills, they have the energy, and they are willing uh, to make a contribution. So the economies need to expand to create those jobs. But I think a big part of the solution is also equipping those young people with the skills they need to become job creators themselves. So the entrepreneurship that we need to nurture across the continent um, and unleash that as a force uh, for good. Mm. And that's something that Kenya can, can teach us. Finally, um, how are you feeling as a Kenyan in South Africa? We, we have had some problems and there's been attacks on, on foreigners, um, some stress around our visa regulations, and we're now saying we're open for, for business. Do you mm. buy that as a Kenyan? Well, I, I think uh, most Kenyans will sympathize with the South Africans. What happened uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago was lamentable. I think it was regrettable and it was condemned you know, by all right-thinking Africans. It goes against uh, Ubuntu, it goes against African unity. I think the, the prospects of this continent are interlinked, so we all need each other to make the, the, the continent prosper. But speaking as a Kenyan, I, th I think Kenyans understand that sometimes the actions of a few misguided people can ruin the reputation of a whole or risk ruining the reputation of you know what has been built over time so Kenya and South Africa have historically had good relationships I think that will continue notwithstanding this one um, unfortunate incident and as it happens uh, Cyril Ramaphosa was in Kenya at the beginning of the month uh, attending a national day celebration and he apologized uh, on behalf of South Africans and I think that was very what well received I was going to say was that received well yes it was are we being forgiven all right thank you so much uh, good to end it on on that positive note uh, peter mwangi the ceo of old mutual in kenya and good to we may try uh, fit in an interview later it's been a jam-packed day and this conference really kicks into gear tomorrow so if i don't see you later i will see you uh, from the early hours of tomorrow morning we'll be covering all the events here live at the convention center back to you in johannesburg